Hey guys, welcome back to another episode here from the Hermitcraft server with your goat. It's me, the doctor. Hello guys, how's it going? <laughs> it's 120 times upon the server, but uh, we are looking at different things. And I, uh, well, we'll look into 120 things as well. There's so much happened uh, within one week, I don't even know. Last week I said, ah, the distractions, we took care of the crown situation now, you know, got rid of distractions, oh no, there was another incident, and I can't believe it. We'll talk about it in a second. Before though, we, I, I did some testing here. <laughs> I wanted to see if you can actually put the crown on a Zombert, and it turns out you can't. So, introducing King Zombert, Mambo's best friend, ouch. <laughs> I also realized I never put on the crown in the last episode to actually try it out. But yeah, <laughs> it looks quite, quite fantastic. Uh, beautiful crown, beautiful crown. So those guys are a bit paranoid. They don't like rail tracks that much. Will? No, this guy will never burn. The pumpkin will never take burn damage. Oh, we, we, gotta, we gotta kill this guy to take the crown off of him and... <laughs> We can. So now let's put it on put it on ourselves for now. Oh wow. Man. Would be a shame if we'd be strutting around Green's base, stunting a bit with that bad boy, wouldn't it? <laughs> Wait. <gasps> what is that? What does Doc Def on have on his back? <laughs> oh baby. Yes indeed. Butterfly wings. What? Ah, yeah, I'm telling you, man. The lore keeps expanding. <laughs> Wait. Check it out. Oh, baby. Look at how majestic that looks. Man, it's cyber... Yeah, butterflies. You know, implant butterfly wings with, you know, redstone components and mechanical components. I'm a cyborg officially. I mean, I've been one for a long time. <laughs> now, I actually got butterfly wings. All my elytras will look like that now. And I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> Belmarzi, the legend. Uh, check out the link in the video description to Belmarzi. Help me out with that. Uh, but uh, there's a bit of a story to that. And um, yeah, let's quickly look on the Twitter feed. Uh, that's actually absolutely insane. All right, so here we are, you know, at uh, my Twitter feed. And where you can see, you know, I retweet a lot of fan art. Here you can see the thumbnail from last episode, for, for example. <clears throat> or here, this, you know, there's so many amazing pieces. It's not even funny. <laughs> it's amazing how incredibly talented our fan artist community is, you know. And, um, you know, recently I was telling some stories about Doki, you know. And, um, yeah, that they like to role play recently, you know, either we play cat and then, and then we are two bears in a pillow, pillow cave and then snakes and we need to crawl on our bellies and then butterflies all of a sudden. All of a sudden, butterflies became the super big thing. So we had to pretend to fly around, right? <clears throat> then, you know, God forbid I stop flapping for five seconds. <laughs> Doc immediately goes like, hey, go, daddy, keep on flapping, man. You know, we're butterflies. Um, and I was like, ah, come on, can I at least be an eagle? And, uh, you know, Doc would be like, no, you're the butterfly. <laughs> I'm the eagle. <laughs> so I was joking about it, butterfly for life. You know, six foot four tall butterfly, sigh. And um, then I realized, oh crap, the fan art community will go crazy with this. They love making fun of me. Mm. And then I realized, Nick, like, don't you dare. <laughs> I will disown you all. <laughs> oh, too late. And then I, uh, yeah, was embracing it. So, Belmarsi here with the first, uh, you know, design, you know, having the butterfly wings on, and it keeps on going. These are so cute. Look at these amazing pieces. Make sure to check out all our fan artists here, right? They are so amazing. I love this. <laughs> yeah, with the butterfly wings, and then me and Doki. <laughs> <laughs> I love that bit so much. Uh, with the pink wings, Doggy is the eagle. Uh, and then me <laughs> being like, all right, I guess I have wings now. Look at this amazing art pieces. I mean, it's uh, look at this. 
oh, it looks so good. And, you know, the details look at me like like the face being like, <laughs> oh, this is just, you know. And then even animated. I mean, look at this. Look at that's by Yukon. Also, um, you know, was featured in some of our thumbnails before. And you can see, <laughs> look, I mean, the fan artists were just having a blast with it in between some cool pieces. Look at that. I mean, I can just, yeah, as I said, I share a lot of fan art. This is also a very majestic piece. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was an endless flood, you know. I mean, just absolutely, absolutely lovely. Look at that, the red. Amazing, right? Look at this. <laughs> Keeps on going. People people had a field day with it. And I loved it too. I loved, you know, your creativity you were pouring out. Look at all these amazing pieces. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, what can I say? Our fan artists are amazing. Then there were some, you know, sketches and studies. And then I came across this bit here by Saber, uh, Saber Cat. And I really love their interpretation of the pair of wings having these uh, bits and pieces in there, like some, some uh, cybernetic stuff. And um, yeah, I love that to bits. And then I contacted um, Belmarzi and said, yo, did you see that? Could you help me out? I found a resource pack that actually has butterfly elytra wings. Um, maybe you could adjust it to look a bit like that and maybe make the color pink because I find it uh, yeah, looking even more goofy, you know, like a fairy uh, in a way. And yeah, uh, you, uh, <laughs> Belmazi was like, oh, I'm so, yes, I love it, you know. Obviously also being part of the fan artist community and uh, having a field day with it. And they did it, yeah. And this, um <laughs> yeah, the glitter incident. Ah, I just love your fan art. GB dog here. There's so much. Oh yeah, here. It's a bit uh, a piece Doki made. I was also proud about that. It looks also really cool. <laughs> Anyways, that is the yeah, and then this piece here that's also amazing. Also using the cybernetic style. Um see through, which is also really, really cool. The dragon in the back. Wow. I'm thinking this is thumbnail material. And yeah, here you can see the thumbnail of this week. Yeah, of course, we need to appreciate the thumbnail of this week as well. And yeah, by Low Ficus. Over on the Reddit, um, amazing piece. Uh, me with my crowns in the back. And yeah, I think that's just fitting. And I'm thinking maybe next week uh, we have uh, thumbnail material right here. What do you guys think? Is that the thumbnail for next week? I mean, that's just absolutely stunning piece as well so yeah as usual right check out my twitter feed there you can find a lot of our uh, amazing fan artists and yeah as usual also check out link um, to the newest thumbnail here um, low ficus over on the hermit craft reddit and with that said now you understand why we expanded our lore i mean it has to be done from now on official Canon is I have butterfly wings. <laughs> yes, indeed. Butterfly wings it is. Ah, and yeah. Whoops. Wait. Yeah. Free cam confusing. Yeah. And I think they turned out really, really great. Super nice level of detail. But, you know, I, what was important is you don't want to go too high resolution. So things l don't look too modded or so. And especially for the Elytra, I feel that was really important. But it has great detail to it. And I think that is just simply amazing. So thank you, Bel Marsley, for yeah, making our vision uh, come true and expanding the lore. Um, talking about expanding things, uh, rapidly expanding explosives in somebody's base or, yeah, when it comes to tunnel bores, uh, is a bad idea. And uh, recently... Like, you know, I was thinking, pesky bird, we're done now. They learned their lesson, right? They literally blew up my tunnel bore, and I was thinking, okay, they will learn that, you know, actions have consequences. Now, was I wrong? So Zedaf went to pesky bird over there and asked if they could have a dragon egg too. I would have given him mine that still sits back there <laughs> with the exploded tunnel bore and anyways pesky bird was like oh yes you can have one but we're gonna make it fun 
I'm gonna make a scavenger hunt. And I, I watch, you know, Setter's video and think, oh, this is fun, cool, yeah, man. That's typical Green. He always, you know, tries to make good content for everybody. Ah, nice. Good guy, Green. Right, I'm really stoked and I see, ah, huh, funny, cool. The, the scavenger hunt even leads over into the perimeter. That's nice. I'm pretty sure not so many of Zeta's viewers maybe know what's going on over here. So that's a nice plug, you know, and it's like, cool. So, you know, had these eggs everywhere and the eggs were kind of leading Zeta along. And he comes along here and I'm, I'm like, oh, cool. He's exploring my base a bit. That's neat. Comes over here and it points over there. And there's this. What? And then, you know, there was a clue. I think it was leading to beat up the store. But look at this. The challenge in my base was Green actually made Zadav blow up TNT in my base. I mean, you know. They picked a spot where for sure there, there wouldn't be much danger, right? There's my the storage room is below there, but you know, that uh, some some damage to that happens from that one TNT there's solid. So, you know, I'm not saying you know this was extremely reckless, right? But <laughs> very cheeky. I mean, what? And very pesky. I am stunned. Does that mean controlled TNT damage? to other hermit's bases is good now? Well, I wear a crown, uh, crown, and what I say is law anyway, so I say, okay, using control TNT explosions uh, to get other hermits in trouble is okay? All right. <laughs> All right, Korean. All right. I, I got something for you, man. I got something for you. That is... You know, and then I was thinking, okay, I saw it in the video, and then I was like, ha ha, surely, you know, it's got to be repaired when I come back. No, it was like that. Zedaf also didn't repair it. What are you, like, am I at war with Zedaf now? I mean, you know, the instigator was Green, clearly. And then Zedaf was just desperately trying to get his dragon egg. But when, he, you know, he blew up stuff, nobody told me. Like I only found out in the video. Yeah. The Artiki that is. I mean, that's really pushing it. That's really pushing it. So now, <laughs> you know, I was like, what are we going to do to this guy? I mean, that is, we need to, like, you know, maybe he was just jealous, you know, about Scar, who, uh, by the way, actually recently asked me what he needs to do to get rid of these skulls. And I explained some ways <laughs> of doing it. It looks like he corralled a bunch of the horses here. But, you know, skulls are still there, right? Yeah, right here. Maybe Green was uh, just, uh, just a little bit jealous that he, he didn't get uh, the amazing skull prank. And he was like, hmm, maybe I'll poke the goat again. Okay, then. Okay, then, Green. Like, you leave me no choice. Like, I, you know, like, I, 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 I want to do other things. I want to do other things. And people be like, oh, dog, always in trouble and, you know, overreacting. What can you do? You live next to crazy people. Like, if you let them run crazy in your yard, eventually your house will burn down. I mean, that's, you know. So, I mean, there's only two options. Either you move out or you defend your home. And, um... I sure will not move somewhere else. We will we'll go at them. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about 120 stuff. So I looked into armor trims a little bit. Maybe the very observant amongst you already saw that I have some templates here. So I went exploring in the nether a little bit and yeah, I came across a bastion. Um, yeah, here's a quick clip of me finding that stuff. Man, I've been in the nether for way too long already. Uh, I checked like five bastions, at least or six. Now we are at minus 5,000 already. I mean, you know, the bastions are in kind of a straight line. 
right? So there's one around 3,000, 4,000, roughly 1,000 blocks apart. So it's not super hard to find them. But yeah, oh, the loot distribution has been measly. <laughs> I, you know, some hermits must have been around. Some chests seemed to be looted. I haven't found a single armor trim or anything. I'm literally looking for snout armor trim at the moment because I think for pants, there's only one armor trim you could use, and that is snout. So there's two more chests. It's another bastion here. Um, we need to clear it a little bit. Technically, I'm not really fully equipped to explore here. Those brutes pack a punch. When I see them, I need to take them out right away. Yeah, there's a brute guy. At least they take fire damage. Okay, this guy is dead. This baby picker is also dangerous. Let's check this chest here. Oh, wow, golden carrots. Amazing loot. You know, the thing is these days, right, you also need a smithing template now to actually be able to upgrade stuff to netherite. I mean, you can copy those templates, so that's cool. You need to find it once, but yeah, I think everybody was just talking about the templates and the armor trims, but that you actually need an upgrade template to get your netherite gear. I think that flew past a few people. Um, so yeah, okay, here's another chest. Oh! <laughs> what? All right then. Yeah, that's you see, that's the smithing template you need. Oh my god! Okay, normally I always thought that is in the main rooms always. Is there more? Is there other ar armor trims that can be in these things here? There is. What is this? Even. Yeah. Okay, there's a chest down here. And see. Um, there's still brutes around. I mean, I got what I came for. I'm not necessarily <laughs> really keen to keep on looking. I mean, enough. I'm, I'm at it now for like an hour or so, checking all the stupid bastions. Yeah, I'm done, man. I'm flying home. I need. <laughs> I got what I wanted. Yes. Okay, let's see if we find a way through here. I'm done with the nether for today. I mean, they did a lot to improve the nether, but yeah, it's tough, it's tough sometimes with the yeah bastions being relatively rare. And then I think I looked it up. There's like an, around an eight percent chance to finding these snout templates in there, but at least for the netherite upgrade templates, there is a hundred percent chance, as far as I know, in the main room chest that is down below. Problem is with that. Like, maybe we come across the, the bastions again. It, there was one around this here. Maybe I'll spot it again, around 4,000-ish. Hard to tell, but a lot of the um, bastions I checked are, like, kind of broken. Gener they don't generate properly, uh, at least with no main room. So we got, like, insanely lucky just now to literally catch both uh, templates in one chest, which was not a main room. That, or was it considered the main room chest loot? Hard to tell because, it, yeah, I couldn't find the main room at the, uh, this one as well. Anyways, I'll make my way home through the hell maze here. And, um, oh, okay, lava is updating here. That's, so this area is not explored yet, I suppose. All right. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Let's make it home. So, yeah, very lucky here to get these two templates. Um, I want to quickly try out how it works with duplicating those templates. I think it's pretty straightforward. And um, I also wanted to ask you, um, you know, did you, how many of you guys actually knew that you need this upgrading uh, template now to actually get netherite armor? Because I, I knew, but I was it was totally not on my radar. And then... Um, yeah, I remember, wait a minute, yeah, for upgrading there was something too, but it was really, everybody was talking about the trims only, but that you actually need these upgrade thingies to do that, uh, to get netherite stuff now. That is maybe something that flew a little bit under the radar. Okay, we do need some diamonds, okay. Let's break some open. You need diamonds to, to copy that stuff. Um, let's quickly... Do so. Let's grab the 
fortune pick. Okay, get ourselves some diamonds. And then it's kind of, you look at uh, what the template is made of. So this looks dark. So this is black stone you need. And this is just netherite, I assume. Or netherrack, better say. Yeah, I wouldn't say you would need netherite. Or would you? Nah. Let's, let's try. I think it was something like that. You put that in and then a st the stone thing. Yeah, all right. Here we go. Okay. Boom. And now we have two. And yeah. So for the snout, then does polished blackstone work as well? No. I think it was blackstone, if I'm not completely mistaken. Wait. I have a blackstone chest here. Okay. Let's grab some of that and check it out. Pretty sure, though. Hopefully. Otherwise, I might have to look it up. I don't want to sit here. Ah, okay. Nice. Snout armor trim. Nice. We got an additional one. So other hermits also went out already exploring um, the new features, you know, going around with their br brushes, brushing things like... Uh, Indiana Jones, <laughs> like I'm not into that uh, archaeology update too much, um, you know, it's a fun thing, I don't know, what do you think about it, um, 120 new features, um, hmm. hard to tell, I mean there was uh, some decent stuff, I would like to get a camel, I don't know, just to see the derpiness of it, I think um, actually Mambo found some sniffers, and then we need to fly to Sizuma Void. Oh, wait. Um, yeah, and um, duplicate some of the templates. He posted on our Discord, said, hey, I found some more templates if you need them. And actually, there's two of them I would like to copy as well to make our armor trim, which I hope uh, should look really cool. But if I am, yeah, not fully mistaken, Mambo actually... Yeah, there they are. There, yeah. <laughs> he had some sniffers there. Nice. And uh, he found this pottery shot. So, you know, we don't have to do that. We can just look at it here in Mambo's base. I mean, also, lots of missed chances with this pottery stuff here. I mean, it's kind of cool. You can make this individual pottery. You can't put plants in it. Why? Why can't we put big plants or, or things or, you know, in there? We cannot put in the small flower pots. You could stick a small flower pot on top that kind of blends in fairly nicely and then put in... A, but Why? Why can't we not hide or put items in there, you know, and make these pottery shards and then we could, sh you know, use them for mini games? Why can't we not take the suspicious sand and or craft suspicious sand and actually, you know, put things in there? There's so many questions <laughs> and missed chances. And yeah, this is a nice decorative item, but, it, you know, why not uh, make, make it more interactable? Like, you know, I can't even access an inventory here. That would have been may maybe cool, you know, so you can store stuff in there, use it as an alternative storage or so. I mean, yeah. I might know a way to actually make this into a storage container, though. Hmm. We might look into that eventually. I need to put that on my to-do list. I think I know a way to actually give this thing an inventory. Hmm. Oh, now you witnessed the springing of ideas, how that works. Okay, anyways, here is the sniffers. <laughs> they are cute, but I was thinking they were, you know, the, uh, when they grown up, they, those are grown ups, of course, that they were taller. Hmm? Do I smell nice? Do I smell like tomato or like a butterfly? <laughs> yeah, they are pretty cool. But, yeah, uh, nobody found a camel yet, as far as I know. That would be cool to have one. <laughs> I don't know. I find them kind of derpy and fun. Also, Green made some good progress. Yeah, we'll spend some time over in this area today as well. Okay, I'm on my way to Zizuma Void. He has some templates we need. All right, here we are in Zizuma's base. And yeah, it's pretty cool. I've been here plenty of times hanging out with Suzuma, but never really showed it on video. But he lives inside this skull, uh, or full skeleton body, pretty much. Pretty cool. And yeah, this is storage room. And what we need is we need wild armor trim and trim and coast. Coast is already duplicated here, so you know we're just gonna 
pay him for that, give him nine diamonds. So we should be all good, no worries about that. And we need a uh, wild, because um, I want to put that on my shoes. And then I think I have a really good combo of uh, trim I want to use. Mm, yeah, for wild, that I think we need mossy cobblestone to duplicate that. Question is, where would that be? I mean, there's nothing in here at all. Okay. Yeah, that's just gravels. Here with the cobble, no. I mean, we have cobble. Just need some moss or so. Probably has a moss farm somewhere. We'll find it. We'll find the moss. Yeah, the Zuma also already made a small sniffer farm here. Nice. Oh yeah, and he's getting the new uh, seed. Guess we can take one of each here as well. That is no problem. More than enough here. Torch flower in the pitcher. Oh yeah, those are the sniff eggs you can find via archaeology. But yeah, we don't, you know we don't really have to look. I mean, they, you know, sniffers everywhere. I found a mossy cobblestone though. So there's that. So now we should be able to duplicate the wild template. And um, then we can start making our armor. And okay, where is it? Smithing template. Um, wait, I didn't take it out right. Yeah. Wild. Okay. So you do this again. And then this. And surround it with diamonds. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Cool. And then we put one back in here again. And we give Sisuma the rest of the diamonds for all the other stuff we took. <laughs> but yeah, he's cool with taking a few saplings, he already mentioned. Um, so yeah, that's that. We got all the um, templates we need and now we need a smithing table and then we can uh, fiddle with our armor. Let's head back to base. All right, made it back to base and duplicated the templates again. So I have, you know, one excess. So now in total we have these three different ones plus the upgrading templates and yeah i looked into the armors a little bit there's uh, websites you know where you can uh, configure your trim and figure out what you like best and for now i came up with this so we need wild that's gonna go on the shoes so let's see how that works the smithing table, template, armor piece and whatever needs to go on there yes and of course um, we want to use redstone. I mean, yeah, <laughs> there's, there's no doubt. Redstone it is. Okay, yes, yes, I like that. That's nice. Okay, and then for the pants, I wanted to do snout. Um, that just looks really, really cool in my opinion. Let's grab snout. Pants, trim, hmm? and make the pants, and then let's do the head right away. For the head, I wanted the coast piece then, yes. Okay, head, and then we can look uh, at it all together. So here you go there, and you go there, and boom. Nice, okay, let's put it on, and ta -da! From the back, yes, looking cool. Oh, baby, yes, that's some proper redstone armor. You know, it looks like an extension to my, you know, inner redstone workings with my arm here and so on. See the slits? And now I have them on the legs as well. And it almost looks like, you know, with the snout trim, you have this round, it almost looks like a belt buckle. To me, it looks like the control unit Darth Vader has, and this is how I, you know, control the pressure in my suit and all. <laughs> The lore, the lore is expanding, guys. Okay, let's look at it from behind here. So the back, we have the simple stripe. But I liked, um, you know, how, how this armor trim is. There is the um, silence armor trim as well that is really colorful. Jeff has found that, so we could have that for the head. But I was thinking probably everybody will go with silence because everybody's so hyped because it's also a bit rarer, I think. So let's quickly take off the elytra so we can see the back of the pants. Yeah, looks really cool. And I like the simple trim around the helmet, focusing, you know, um, on our face mask there. 
Wow, look at that, man. That is really cool. Yeah. And then, to top it all off, perfect butterfly wings. Which also, you know, blend in color-wise really well. And it all makes sense law-wise, right? If there's some cybernetic implants and stuff in Minecraft, it has to be redstone-powered, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Redstone is flowing through our veins. Nice. We are at zero, 0 This is my grid I made uh, for the dragon. But um, I know one thing. All the hermits went south exploring. And when I was out here, you know, doing the, the grid for the dragon and exploring here a bit, I remember there was one desert village somewhere out here. And I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that it definitely gets pruned every time. You know, when we prune the world, because out here there's literally nothing. So I roughly remember where it was. There must be a desert village here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yep, here we go. All right, let's see. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Uh, you know, sometimes it's really worth waiting the first uh, yeah, two, three days when the crazy update, update hype is going on and then, uh, you know, do, do smart decisions. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's sitting down. Nice. Okay, we got... There's one camel here, though, only. I think it was like that, right? That you can only get one camel per, per village. If I'm not mistaken, but yeah, that... That was just pruned. Okay, let's let's quickly sleep up there or somewhere. Get rid of the night. And then um, we'll see. Let's find a spot that is not monster habitated. Is here good? Yeah. Get rid of them and then we'll see. We can take that camel home. I brought a saddle just in case. Um, I don't know if you need a saddle for a camel. What is this? There's a tiny... What? All right. <laughs> like a tiny mangrove biome here. All right, then. That almost looked like a man-made structure. Now, I was not unsure uh, sure again about my this area gets always pruned theory. But sure looks like it. All right, then maybe... Oh, man, while we're here. I always need some hay bales. Hay bales is always good. Let me quickly check done some exploring in a while. Is there maybe some suspicious sand in villages too? No, it's only in, in these desert wells. I haven't looked into any suspicious sand and I, I don't think I will, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, nothing too useful here. Let's just quickly double check. You never know. Maybe you have a lu lucky find. Hello, guy. No. Okay. Now for the main job. A camel. We're about 2,000 blocks away from the perimeter or so. We would have to go this way, I think, to go back. Okay, let's see. Do we put a saddle on that thing? We do! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stand up. All right, all right. Yep, it's not particularly fast. The question is, are there better... Are there better camels and you can breed up sp speed and health and whatnot? And the other question is, why does a camel not have an inventory? I mean, you know, that's also one of the mischances. Normally, you know, like a camel should be able to take a double chest or two double chests or something. Like camels, you know, they are used for transporting goods around for century, thousands of years. Why did they not implement it? You, you can ride with two people, but why not live, give a choice? Hey, wait a minute. There's another village back there. I didn't know about that, but I just spotted it on the horizon. Let's take our super slow camel and, you know, I mean, seriously, riding this home will be like, why? But there is another desert village. Let's go and have a look. And there's all, like, is this another one of this? No, that's the mangrove we saw. Okay. We haven't done any exploring in a while, why not, you know, while we're out here. Let's look at things a little bit. Just want to check this village. If you find another camel, we're the camel king. <laughs> uh, then, 
yeah, I have some leads with me. Mm. So let's see. One camel per village, they say. Mm. There's pigs. Camel, 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 camelia. And there's another one. <laughs> the camel king strikes again. Now we can breed camel. <laughs> All right. After an endless trek through the wild, I finally made it uh, to um, Keralis' base. I couldn't find any surface lava for the life of me. I should have brought some obsidian. But I didn't want to fly back, you know, it's just like, okay, let's walk. But I have to say, I had to drag the camels through some yeah, wooded areas. Oh my, what a pain in the butt, uh, believe me. Like, that was no fun. Why can't we fly with animals on leads, you know? Couldn't the leads do that? Why do they need to snap off so easily when mobs get stuck? Uh, it's... Yeah, it was a big pain, man. Can't tell you how happy I was when I saw Keralis' blimp in the at the horizon. All right, I'll 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 try to find his net. Oh, there is a nether portal right there. We can go in there and then we see where we come out. Is that his main nether portal? That would be very convenient for us just to get in there. Let's see. I think so. Then we need to somehow maybe... Yeah, I'm not quite sure if we can reach my... Um, portal in the main base, but it will definitely be a whole lot closer. Oh, yes. Okay. Camels to the nether. Blop. Oh, camel on fire. No, no, stop burning. I can't put you out. It's the nether here, please. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah. I guess there's gonna be a camel parade today <laughs> in Scarland. <laughs> Let's go, camel parade! Let's go! <laughs> Daddy, look, there's camels! Yes, little beat ups, they're tall, unlike you! <laughs> Alright, let's make it home. <laughs> the camel safely started home. I quickly wanna rush over to the museum district here. Because, oh, there it is. Okay, I wondered what happened to the guest. <laughs> Looks like it safely stored away inside this glass box here. There's pandas. Wait, <laughs> are we having a zoo here right now? Because, you know, Kapfen also sent me a message, said if I have a charged creeper in store. Well, of course I do. A brown panda? Oh, okay, that's, that's actually rare. It's got them frogs in here. I also heard he was breeding up a, a blue egg axolotl. I'm not... Man, what's going on here? Okay, that's, there's pandas everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Blue bird? What's happening here? Historic bird of questionable origin? Okay, then. <laughs> Let's quickly have a look around here, man. It's got all them Easter eggs. Wow. What is this? Livestream torches. What? Yo! Skull and Streets collections, what? Ah! Had a first dragon in the Hermitcraft overworld, that is cool. Legendary dwarven beard, how huge it is. Okay, hot guy memorability, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's that up there? Oh, wow. You need to parkour to get, to get up there or what? So you can actually see the exhibit. The hot potato passed around. What? <laughs> the parkour crown. Okay, and then some simple parkouring to get up. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> wow. Dunk tank. Total chaos. Rare blue ally totem. 
Octodrop. Wow, yo, he packed like everything in there. So many memories. Like every single little thing. Shut up, the Historicon. Oh, man. Okay, normally that's not allowed in a museum, but... You'll speak when spoken to! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Audio corner. Oh. Player record. Disco horn. Oh, it's allowed. Oh man, there's probably our anthem here and stuff. Yo. Okay, we <laughs> I think he's still working on this all. Look at the individual trophies. Man, there's this is really, really cool. Beat up simulator, what? Got a shriek? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is actually, it is actually all really, really, really cool. You can give donations. People give money. Uh, they don't need money. They need exhibits. Whoa, there's more stuff up here. TFC Eternal Flame of Memory. Oh man. Ah, also part of our history by now. We unfortunately lost one of our hermits. That's still something. <sighs> yeah. A trip down memory lane, I guess, right? All right. Enough distractions. Enough distractions. Now it's time to teach Pesky Bird a lesson. A lesson about life. That actions do have consequences. All right, we are in a secret location here. And yeah, I'm just clearing out some space. And um, yeah, we brought some goodies. And we will use this um, to teach. <laughs> yeah. So I'd say let's get going here. It's not much to build. It's a pretty simplified design, but uh, it definitely should do the trick. Out of the secret location again, uh, where we build a little something, I'm over here on the bridge now and um, yeah, I want to leave a little present for Korean and this present is gonna come, oh man, <laughs> with a special, special little something attached to it. But first thing we need to do, as we tested in the beginning of the episode, oh, now it all makes sense, what? <laughs> this guy needs a crown. And now we can carefully, carefully remove everything around here and have this guy with the crown right here on the bridge, waiting for Green. And we're also going to name the guy. Okay, so he's protected from sunlight now. He will never burn with the pumpkin on. Uh, but they also cannot get out of there. And, um, yeah, there can only be one best friend. <laughs> so if Green wants to become Mumbo's best friend, he better, he better kill this zombie. Nothing will happen if, if he kills him, you know, we'll just get the crown. Nothing will happen at all. I think, though, to really make sure they understand the message, we need some signage. <laughs> all right. Perfect. Thank you so much for the dragon egg. I had a blast finding it. Left a present for you. It is in front of Mambo's bunker. Zed. <laughs> the greatest gift is friendship. <laughs> Thanks again, Zed. <gasps> oh my god! 
He got me the crown. There can only be one best friend. Oh, a Braveheart reference. Need to kill him. Actions do have consequences. <laughs> <laughs> ah, man. It's always kind of epic to see the sun rise over the perimeter. <laughs> we did a lot already this season. Just the other day, um, I was standing up there on the perimeter. Oh, look at that, how majestic that looks. And Bobby renders in everything. And I was looking down, it's like, man, yeah. By now, a lot, a lot of work went into all of this. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> Lots of projects and still much to go. And um, I really want to focus on some more uh, decoration. I, have, I had a cool idea for this area back the, there, opposite side of the perimeter. Um, I think um, I need to tackle that. We're already on it a little bit with Jeromos, but it's a massive project that will need millions of blocks. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to start start there as well. But yeah, we did quite a bit uh, this season. I have to say there's farms and things everywhere. A lot of stuff that is not directly in the perimeter. We did a lot of research and crazy projects. And so far, this season to me has been absolute fun. Loved every second of it. Oh yeah, by the way, um, I think Impulse is taking a break for a week, a family vacation. And he left prizes for um, all of us hermits, <laughs> or free sample. I think he built this crazy bamboo farm. All right, there is the bamboo blocks as well, right? How do we even do those? It's the final feature. <laughs> final feature of one, it has to come, yeah, bread, I bred one camel, the 120 features. That is the planks, the bamboo wood. But I, from what I can tell, it didn't look like super good. It's good firewood, I guess, or, you know, crafting wood. How does it even... Is it a full shebang? Aha. Okay. Then it does these blocks of bamboo. Yeah. They actually look cool. And then you can also strip them, I think. And then you can make other blocks out of them. Do they go in here? No. Does this go in here? No. All right. Yeah, I think with these, you can make the solid blocks then. Can you, can you also do this? No, you can't. Oh, wait. There was something. Can you... Yeah, that's the bamboo planks then. Okay, it's a two-tier pro process. All right. I mean, yeah. Not too ugly. And there's the other variants you can craft from that. But I think maybe those, those packed bamboo bundles, they're kind, of, they're kind of cool. They look kind of cool. Yeah, and you can make the rafts out of them. And all the other stuff. Bamboo trapdoor. How does that look? Let's have a look real quick. Oh yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, there's some, some nice decorative blocks blocks in there. For sure. So overall, you know, my opinion about 120, not groundbreaking, but all right. The armor trims is definitely my favorite feature. Uh, but still... I don't know. I would like to see uh, Mojang really, really, really tackle the inventory situation now, right? I mean, more and more items get added. And let's say you build something with two wood types, with some variations, doors, things, and blah, blah, blah. Your inventory is already clogged, right? And trying to tackle the inventory situation would really, really be about time. And I think... Sometimes, you know, uh, when the reactions are not super, super mega enthusiastic uh, by the community, like it was for this update, nobody really complained or what, but, you know, it was not like, oh my God, life-changing update, right? And I think if Mojang would address one of the big, big topics that's been, you know, 
in question uh, around Minecraft for a long, long time. And one of those topics is for sure uh, improved inventory management, increasing inventory size. Um, that uh, would make the community really, really, really happy. So feel free to leave some ideas how in inventory could be improved in Minecraft. would like to read through them. As you know, I always love to read your comments. And um, yeah, of course, we have a comment of the week again before we wrap up the episode of today. So um, yeah, by Sophia here, they say, uh, there's no way that uh, it just happened during a thunderstorm by chance. Power of the goat. I say, now we just need to see Doc flaunting being the first person, I think, to get the purple crown. So Sophia was referencing to me getting the crown, you know, with our teleportation contraption of last episode. And there was actually a thunderstorm going on. And yeah, indeed, this thunderstorm was legit. There is no trickery involved. Um, so yeah, it just happened. But um, we actually do have certain tools to our disposal to uh, do things that are a bit special here on the Hermitcraft. Right? For example, we have that trigger command. Um, you guys uh, probably seen before we can do trigger and then you know um, all kinds of things um, I don't use many of these but we have for example here a trigger that is the cave cleaner trigger that would trigger um, a command that all you know zombies or whatever glow up in the caves below you and you can check if there's somber straggler zombies that holding items and are causing lag you know because we need to keep the server somewhat clean we're playing over here for yeah over a year now and you know we are not the best in keeping everything lag friendly as you know but we actually do tr try so there is tools like that cave glow is the same thing i think you can give them a glow then cave cleaner marks them something like that i haven't used it cup does that quite a bit goes around cleans caves and there's uh, custom model data that is used to make these the crowns for example things like that and then for example here the if invisible command um oh no what toggle hut <laughs> what did i do <laughs> wait no no trigger if invisible yeah i want to do that Boom, right? And then, well, whatever I triggered just now. Um, yeah, then we can make armor stands like that invisible. But as far as I remember, we also had a trigger for thunderstorms, actually. And that is purely for, let me see, yeah, here, thunder. All right, so I could... I could uh, trigger thunderstorm now, and we have that in case somebody really wants to do a epic scene. Uh, it's mostly when we have storylines, right? And then there needs to be some epic showdown, and you know we want to have a thunderstorm at a specific time, purely for specific dramatic recording purposes. We don't allow using the thunder command, uh, for example, to farm creepers, right? So, uh, or uh, heads with uh, charged creepers or something like that, right? For that, we would try to, to play uh, without using the command. But for dramatic reasons, we could do that. Um, or, I don't know, shut off the rain. You know, you need to record your under time pressure. It keeps on raining. You can't get rid of it during daytime. We have a toggle there where you could shut off the rain for recording purposes. So, yeah, there is, of course, always a, yeah our approach to trying to stay as close to vanilla as humanly possible. Right, and uh, just uh, straight up play the game. But you know, for content production, you need to uh, be willing to do compromise. And believe it or not, like it, it takes us forever to make these decisions. It was very, very difficult, for example, for us to finally come to terms with the idea okay, we're gonna use these custom models because there's so much fun stuff we could do with it, like the TCG trophies and you know, all these things. But very, for us, we are very conservative when it comes to that and always very careful because, yeah, we want to stay um, relatable and don't want to overdo it. If we add items and things to the game, we do it for storytelling, for fun. Uh, but still, you know, this is supposed to be survival vanilla Minecraft as possible, as close as possible to yeah, an unmodded version. But let's face it, these days, <laughs> I think I run about 
20 mods by now, right? Like Light Medica and 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 uh, Mini Hut and 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 Tweakeroo, just you know, to help play the game, and then performance improvement mods and Bobby with the render distance and and, and texture packs with the light rust. So I guess you know whatever survival vanilla Minecraft is, that would probably be playing the game completely without any additions in one of the original skins, I guess, and uh, never looking anything up because technically the game right also doesn't really provide you with a tutorial and so on. And um, yeah, so you never know. For me, in the end, it's about us having fun. And if there's a thunderstorm needed to improve the dra dramatic you know, scenario or whatever, I'm totally cool with it. And um, yeah, sometimes though, you get lucky, like I did when I actually got the crown and I walk up to my computer and it's a legit thunderstorm. And I was like, no way. <laughs> Yeah, it really fitted with the scene. But of course, you cannot bank on luck like that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I didn't even plan there needs to be a thunderstorm. Uh, later down the road, I thought, yeah, next time if I do such a dramatic scene, maybe I'll use the trigger, trigger thunder command because that yeah, was really dramatic. All right. So yeah, a little look behind the scenes. I hope um, you enjoy these little bits at the end of the video too, where we you know talk a little bit about random stuff inspired uh, by your comments feel free to leave comments um, you know ask questions i'm always willing to talk about that because yeah it's fun right <laughs> okay so yeah hopefully oh man this neighborly conflict will not further escalate i guess i kind of dragged zedaf into it um, but you know i mean zedaf was the, the, the guy that blew up uh, my wall so i had no choice Oh boy, see ya!